Hello and welcome back to Sakura Space. Last time we found out that we are on board a three people large ship and that we need and that we have got a bounty mission for one billion space imperial dollars. So we met our crew and we have made some decisions regarding chasing down this bounty, who is supposedly very dangerous. I wonder how Nami is doing. Kotori and her are as different as the sun and the moon. I'm just gonna turn the sound down a bit because it's a bit... I need to be able to hear myself to determine if I am too loud or and whatnot. Such an expression doesn't really make sense out of the Milky Way. Oh well. Nami is quite different to say the least. I can hear loud echoes coming from the training room. Let's see what's going on there. Well the training room... I step inside the training room's observation deck. Sure enough, there she is. Quietly she stands to attention. So, what settings would you prefer for this particular combat scenario, Nami? Medium difficulty this time. I need a warm up before I really get into it. Acknowledged. Preparing simulated environment. As the air speaks, a number of different hills, objects and obstacles begin to emerge around Nami. In addition to that, I begin to see a number of different drones lazily drifting through the air around her. They dive in between cover and obstacles like how fish would hide underneath a, underneath a rock in an aquarium. It sets the stage for a, quite an interesting engagement. Oh, that's the picture I use for the thumbnails. Unlike how awkward she was before, Nami's eyes are filled with clarity. I can turn the music up a bit here. Yeah, that's good. Until how awkward, she, unlike how awkward she was, I think I read that All right. She carefully analyzes her environment, fully prepared for any threats coming her way. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, but she's obviously wielding a sword. And a cyan and yellow attempt at an infinity gauntlet. Just need some uh, some yellow skin tone, some or purple skin tone, and some lines on her chin, and she'd be good to go. Rule, rule, third sixty-three Thanos, I believe. Ah, I don't really want that image in my head. She carefully analyzes her environment, fully prepared for any threats coming her way. Beginning combat exercise in ten seconds. As the AI counts down, she seizes her blades and wade in enters the battle stance. Three, two, one, begin. Holographic enemies appear in the room. A complete circle of security drones surround her. They begin to hone home in, unleashing a barrage of holographic pellets. Nami doesn't miss a beat. With fluid movement, Nami strikes down holographic drones without missing a single beat. Her plasma cutter hums and sings as it flashes through the air. A flash prepare, appears behind her as one of the drones fi fires a holographic missile. With incredible reflexes, she dodges the rocket completely. Holographic sparks spray through the air as she slices through the drone. Her body moves with perfect precision, beautiful and graceful. A larger drone appears, two miniguns sitting on either side of its hulking shape. It unleashes a figurative death storm of bullets, practically filling the entire room with holographic sparks. Even though that dig even through that digital haze, Nami doesn't lose her cool. She slides underneath the drone as it continues to fire, slicing open its belly. It disappears in a burst of pixelated explosions. More and more virtual drones continue to pour into the room. Increased difficulty. Acknowledged. The drones immediately respond. 
They move in ever-shifting patterns, are actively attempting to flank and keep the distance away from Nami's deadly blade. Yet it doesn't seem to help at all. Nami moves like a blur, cutting them down within seconds of materializing. Bit by bit, the stream of virtual combatants begin to slow down, until no more into the room at all. Without much more fanfare, she cleans up the remaining drones. Soon, it's just her standing in the room. She does not even appear to be breathing particularly hard. How are my results? Your combat performance was exceptional, Nami. The time between an enemy entering the room and being eliminated is only a few seconds. All hostile, hostile enemies in the simulation were eliminated with no to little delay. You are in peak condition for combat operation against non-organic targets. Overall, this has been your best performance since you helped quell that robotic uprising. Good. We may need to defend ourselves at a moment's notice, especially against non-organic foes. She also holds us a sword and stretches. I think it would be good to take a short nap now. It has been some time since I got a good night's sleep after all. That would be a good idea. You did not sleep particularly well last night, I can tell. Slowly the virtual environment around her dissipates into pixels. Oh, Captain. I didn't know you were watching. It was a very impressive performance, Nami. It always amazes me to watch you fight. R right, thank you. She gets awkward when she realizes someone has been watching her do something. Could you please let me know if you're watching? It just throws me off a bit. I didn't want to interrupt you when you look so focused. You're a stellar combatant, Nami. Thank you. I swear, Nami really is too shy for her own good. How is it that she's unable to handle someone looking at her while she works? I suppose it's just part of her personality. We have been working together for a very long time and I've yet to see her act any differently. I... I wanted to get ready for when we confront our bounty. After all, practice does make perfect, doesn't it? You're right. Nami always practices. She is, by definition, a perfectionist. So, what scenario did you use the simulation room for this time? Considering that the simulation can simulate anything you can imagine, there is no lack of choices for training. Full-scale invasion of Earth. It's like the one from that old video game we used to play to get, we used to all play together. You remember how we used to do that one dungeon where robots invaded Earth? Oh yeah, I remember that. When is the last time they've made a decent MMO in the Milky Way anyway? You know what it's like with the industry these days. No innovation, nothing new. Just the same old boring grinding. That's true. We should find another game though. It was fun back in the day. Although this onboard simulation is amazing too. Definitely the best purchase we've made. Training before this thing was a nightmare. It sent shivers down my spine as I remember how badly Nami and Katori damaged the ship with their sparring matches. What else have you tried simula simulating on it? Just combat situations mostly. Nothing too special. You aren't even pushing this thing to the limits of its hardware. I love how the AI is just ever present and like, I'm smiling, things are happy, yoohoo, I'm over here. Maybe you could even simulate entire dungeons from the games we used to play. Well, I don't want to risk the, run the risk of burning it out. Remember what happened when Kotori tried to simulate an entire MMO? Yes, and that is why Kotori is no longer allowed in the simulation room. At least she can at least she's content to spend most of her time in the pool instead of breaking the ship's hardware these days. So the target uses a whip as a weapon. That's what the reports say. Why a whip, of all things? What about it is so special? It is a massive universe we live in, Nami. Finding someone proficient enough with a whip to use in combat, it's not exactly impossible. While true, anyone could apply themselves to learning any other weapon and overall end up being much more effective. Simulate Humanoid with whip weapon. Acknowledged. Simulate 
unarmed humanoid. For a few moments, we watch the simulation. The armed humanoid attacks the other one with his virtual whip. Nami analyzes it carefully, nothing with angles, noting which angles and methods the whip wielding simulation uses. Hmm. This is only a very basic simulation, but it gives me a rough idea of how she could approach combat. She nods to herself. I have a few ideas of how, of how, for countering it now. Hmm. Well, we learned from the AI that this is a particularly fast person, able to take down multiple uh, ranged enemies in a very short time, so there is more to her than a whip. Do not get overconfident. There's a lot more to Akane than a whip. Considering that she threw an entire army of drones at me from out of nowhere, we have to be careful that she doesn't try to attack us in other ways. Waging a war with nothing but proxy drones is something she is she is capable of. I think so too. Although she is overconfident and would readily show her face whenever she wants, that does not mean she lacks her, the resources to be able to defeat us without re revealing herself. Perhaps it would be better to focus on my training against the Sentinels. There's nothing wrong with training to prepare yourself for both possibilities, however. Definitely, Captain. I will make sure I'm prepared to fight against anything that she throws at us. I have no doubt that you will, Nami. Do we have any more information since we left that meeting? Deducing from... Deducing what we have observed, she's obviously someone with training. You cannot simply commit crimes in broad daylight and evade police like that. It could be chalked up to luck, but she has managed to do it consistently, so we can presume that she is armed, dangerous and very competent. That is a good presumption. Is there anything else notable that you have managed to deduce? We've worked out a rough estimate of where she might appear next. Once more information once more information is available, we'll proceed to where she is expected to appear next. The first part of our bounty hunt will be an investigation. We need to work out where she is before we can attempt to take her down. Not only that, but we do not know anything about her connections. She could have an entire cartel of criminals at her back beck and call. Are uh, you having second thoughts about this bounty, Nami? Not second thoughts. We will probably never see another job like this again. But it is a good idea to plan ahead for potential danger. I agree. Anyway, I would like to get some more practice in. I will speak to you later, Captain. Until then, Nami. Ooh. Kind of a Christmassy, spacey vibe. Well, well, I don't mind. My mind has been in a rush since this whole thing began. I need a moment to clear my head. Another cup of cheap coffee and plenty of time to myself. I haven't started anything yet. Nothing has been set in stone. This is very deliberate on my part. Since I have rushed to get ready for this job, I'm going to end up doing a poor job of it if I keep this up. I have made plenty of observations and presumptions, but what I really need to do now is clear my head. At least, I think I would be that would be the best course of action. Yes, it would be. Rushing yourself is usually never a good idea. Right, I need to calm down. Unless I look at at this with a clear head, all I'm going to end up is, is with a jumbled mess. I need to just sit back and carefully analyze the whole situation. Fortunately, I have turned the speakers off in my room. While AI is always helpful, I do not think I need to speak with it right now. What would be best for me right now is to be by myself. I do not need anyone distracting me from my own thoughts. Now, in Sakura games, Usually, when some, someone needs to be alone, they rarely can be. Let me think. Let me think. She has been sighted on multiple planets, but she's only ever revealed herself once. And wherever she went, chaos followed in her wake. Judging by that information, she must work systematically. That little bit of information will be handy if it's true. With a bit of work, I have already noticed a pattern in between her crimes. There's a delay as she travels in between these planets. 
However, the crimes themselves, there do not appear to be any real link between any of them. Sometimes it's significant property damage, sometimes it's merely stealing something pretty. She did take some artwork from a local art gallery once, but it was a piece not done by anyone special. Who is she? And why is she doing this? That is what I cannot work out. None of her crimes seems to be worthy of, an in of intergalactic attention. Now that I think about it, everything about this bouncy seems bizarre. Just who is she? I pull out a dig digital pen and a pad. One of the ways that I work out something out is with a pen. It is impossible to buy paper these days, so I just make do with a digital pad. Sitting back down at my desk, I begin to draw out my thoughts. So my first notable crime started on this planet in this city. But none of the businesses or places she was cited had any connection to each other as far as I can tell. Wait, where were these places located? Was there something close to them that I could connect them to? Alpha the AI is like, I know, oh, he is making up a brilliant idea. But I can't say anything because the speakers is turned off, but I'm still here watching. Always watching. <laughs> <laughs> I turned her really, really creepy there. Creepy robot AI. Yeah. Now that I think about it, the locations of the crimes were always close to police stations? Then perhaps her motive is mocking law enforcement? Or is it for the thrill? But these details would have become readily apparent to anyone else investigating the case, so why hasn't anyone stopped her yet? All of the details swirl around in my head. I have to stop for a moment and calm myself down. There are patterns, but surely someone else would have observed these. So what does all of this mean? Ooh. What? Someone's in the room? Whoever they are, they blocked my vision. Oh no, it's dark in the center of the earth. Did someone slip onto the ship while when I wasn't looking? Who's there? I immediately reach for my pistol. Before I can do so, they pull their hands away. With lightning reflexes, I turn around to see who's there. Yeah, that's... I told you he wouldn't be alone. Guess who? She is pulling a silly grin at me. It's nice to see you too, Katori. I was so deep in my th own thoughts that I did not hear her enter the room. I pulled my hand away from my pistol. You should have seen the look on your face. It is so much fun to see a cool captain lose her composure. Oh, we are female. Ah, well, would you look at that? That's actually new for a change. Normally, it's a male protagonist in a harem situation. Well, I don't mind. Not gonna, not that I change how um, how uh, the captain speaks. But that's just my normal voice. Katori is always doing things like this. But it was kind of nice just to sit there and watch you thinking to yourself. Right. I. Well, I suppose Shika is probably more of a female name. I don't know. She's fully dressed in her battle gear. She's fully dressed in her battle gear. Okay. So that's the battle gear then. Right. <coughs> I see you're wearing your equipment. Well, it's been a while since we had a big job, so I've been doing some training. Her daggers are glowing, obviously a sign that they've been used recently. I've gotten a bit rusty, but there's nothing a little effort won't fix. When she gets the motivation to do something, Katori does it like no one else ever could. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, only time can tell. I was just wondering what our illustrious captain was thinking about. Just working out the details on a bounty. I've bet everything on this case. Not only that, but it's going to be a difficult case to crack. With space travel as fast as it is these days, she could be anywhere in this sector. I only have, a ve I only have very vague information to work with too. 
So what do I do? I know you can work it out. After all, you just need to wait. She will slip up somewhere and you will get more and more information info as time goes on. I do not know if we will be so lucky. The trail is a bit stale, even if we arrive there soon. You're overthinking it. Just relax for a moment. I could see you working yourself into a frenzy. She does have a point. Even when I'm sitting up, up there, my thoughts up here, my thoughts are just at a far too erratic. I need to calm myself down. I think I shall take your advice. Happy to help out, Captain! I expect another kiss as thank you since you're such a generous and kind-hearted, Captain. <laughs> and the AI goes happy with that too. Yay, kiss! Don't push your luck. Yes, yes, professionalism, she winks at me. You will give it up one day. I'll charm you out of it. She disappears as silently as she arrived. Maybe I will give up one day. Ooh. Was that... Is that a mall inside this... Oh. The ship we live on is quite a sizable one. Since the operations of this mercenary com company span across many parts of the galaxy, there are many different teams who live on board. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. So... Let me get this straight. The ship itself has a crew of three members. But multiple teams of mercenaries also live on board. I'm confused. Every team has their own living quarters and there are even onboard shops. Yeah, I was about to say, that seems... They can even have AIs which act as administrators in their quarters if they so wish. Our AI signal us as we step out. Keep in mind you currently do not have an income. This job you have picked is not going to pay for some time. So do be careful with your budget. Thank you again. Come on everyone. Nami stands there awkwardly in her suit. Do we have to? Well, if you don't want to go, you can just stay in your quarters. No, oh, no, I uh, I want to go. When she isn't training on a mission, Nami is very awkward around other people. She is trying to get better at it, however. Katori, on the other hand, have, has to be restrained when she's around other people. She acts too much like an overly friendly Labrador when she's in public. I wonder how everyone is doing today! Remember, you are representing the pride of our company when you are out in public, Kotori. You must act in a dignified, professional manner. She is not listening, however. Come on, let's see what new gadgets they have here. She's practically pulling me by my arm, with Nami t trailing close behind. Perhaps it would have been a better idea to stay in our quarters after all. Then again, most of the company are familiar with their shenanigans. So perhaps it won't, that's, this won't be too much of a problem. These two coach causes such a scene between the both of them. I'll just have to roll with the punches this time. As we pass by a cafe, I can hear the mercenaries chatting among themselves. So, uh, have you heard about that one billion dollar bounty? Who hasn't heard about it? Everyone here wants to have a crack at it, you know. Well, it looks like the bounty has not gone unnoticed. This means we'll have to be careful too. It sounds like a whole lot of talking about nothing to me. What? One billion imperial dollars is nothing? The mercenary snorts. Sorry. Sorry that we aren't all dri driving diamond encrusted ships like you are. You know that diamonds are worthless in this galaxy. They've been mining a damn planet made of the stuff for years. You know what I mean. The point is, even if it turns out to be a hoax, it's worth having a look. That would just be a waste of everyone's time. There's no way of knowing if the bounty is legit or not. They probably wouldn't even pay up at the end of it either. If someone has that kind of dough just lying around, and they probably have the kind of hired muscle to ensure that the merc who claims the bounty mysteriously disappears. Well, when you put it up like that, 
Maybe this is better to stick to a safer job. There's no replacement in this world for hard work, sadly. Looks like everyone is excited about this bounty. It would seem that way. Hey! Hey, you lot! Do you mind? We're trying to have a conversation here. My apologies, gentlemen. No point in starting the fight. Passing by the electronic shops, Katori's eyes glimmer with excitement. Remember that we have to be careful with our budget for the time being. Only buy things that are essential. All of this looks fairly essential to me. I just shake my head. Nami, however, does not appear to be interested in any of it. Is there something you want to see while we're here, Nami? There are a number of different things you can buy here. I want food. We have not restocked in ages. She does make a fair point. Oh, uh, right. That is an excellent idea. We have to restock on bacon, first and foremost. You really should cut back on the bacon. Not you too. If you plan to have so much bacon, you should really do some swimming with me. It'll be a great way to burn off all that fat. It isn't that bad. And I do plenty of work. Everyone in my crew is so carefree. Sometimes I wonder if there is any point in me being the captain at all. We need What we need to buy is an array of healthy and fresh ingredients. I know many diet plans which would be perfect for energy and combat awareness. Perhaps you would like to try it, Captain. What about you, Katori? Nope, I'm just fine as I am. But your diet is far from optimal. My stomach works very different from anyone else's. You see, it's highly important that I get the right amount of sugar daily. How else do you think I have all this energy? It would explain a lot in retrospect. Anyway, that will not be necessary. Just stock up on a variety of different supplies. If you can make something healthy from our stores, then great. If not, then we'll make do. Earth-like ingredients are few and far between on the ship. Since we pass by all sorts of different places, you can end up with some exotic ingredients. Let's just hope that no one else decides to pick up a piece of fruit because it looks pretty. Is something wrong, Captain? You seem troubled. I just remember that there's something I need to do. You two go ahead without me. Are you sure it's nothing? Yes, yes, please. I'll be fine. The two of them seem reluctant, but they don't say anything. Okay, we'll be back before you know it. Let's go buy dinner, Nami. Understood. The two of them disappear out of sight. Good. Ah. Someone's up to something shady, eh? Ah, well. I go to an isolated part of the ship where I'm sure no one else is around. Alright, you can come out out now. Now, what business do you have with me? It's probably just my imagination. Maybe those two mercenaries who, who we were listening to earlier. Around here, people tend to solve their disputes that way. Strictly non-lethal, of course. It goes against company policy to injure other employees. For a long time, there appears to be no one there. Then I hear a giggle echo, echo through the hall. Strange woman. Well, at least they say it's a woman. Oh, I'm just curious about you. <coughs> it's a woman's voice. I know better than most people that you get a lot of strange people on this ship. It's massive and it passes by many different space stations and hops through the galaxy. However, something about this woman, it makes me uneasy. If you were just curious about me, you could have simply just approached me. And yet you followed me all the way here. I cannot help but doubt that you have good intentions. You possess a very analytical mind. Tell me, Captain Shika, who do you think I am? You must be a drifter of some sort. I'm not good with faces, but I am, fam but I am familiar with the teams we work, work around here. Anyone knows who knows me also knows better than to try and start a fight with me. 
I find it hard to believe that a random drifter happens to have business with me. So, just who are you meant to be? Oh, believe me, we are connected. You took up a bounty job recently, didn't you? Like everyone else here, you do odd jobs, and I'm sure that a massive bounty would be irresistible to you. You sure seem to know a lot about me. That is a bit unsettling. Some strange woman followed me like this, and I'm only able to get a vague feeling of being watched. Whoever this person is, they are excellent at concealing themselves. That is cause for concern. I cannot help but let my hand rest on my pistol. You would be surprised at how popular your crew is. It does not matter what job you do, you always do it. You have something of a cult following throughout the galaxy. What I find odd, however, is that you are completely unaware of this. There are people who report sightings of your crew everywhere you go. This is the first time I've heard of this. Just what kind of fan base base do we have then? I do not exactly glue myself to a digital pad like Kotori does, but that's something I have to worry about later. There is also another detail. Isn't it publicly available information when a team picks up a job? Uh, that's right. You have to make the, a declaration to the company when you take up the job. Every other employee aboard the, on board the ship can find out who is doing what job and if they pick if they look it up. So somehow the, this woman has gotten that information and she became aware that my team has chosen this case. However, there would be hundreds of names on, on it by now, judging by the interest generated. So, why did you single out my crew then? <clears throat> what exactly makes us stand out amongst the hundreds who are taking out that job? Oh, but you are very special, Captain. No other mercenary company on board has a success rate as high as yours, do they? Oh. It is then that the woman finally steps out from the shadows. Her appearance... Wait, what is that she's holding? It all suddenly clicks into place. So you must be Yakane then. But how did you end up here? She looks interesting, to say the least. The whip that is her signature rests on one of her hands. Well, not from what I can see, but then again they mentioned Kotori's daggers and I didn't see them either. I have no doubt you figured out the pattern, but there was one other small detail you missed. A company ship also happened to visit the planet you're talking about. It's then that it hits me. So a company employee has been the one causing this mayhem. Something about it did seem familiar to me. In other words, it was you. Precisely. You're a sharp one, aren't you? That ship just so happens to be docked on this capital ship. She's just giving all of this away so easily. You wouldn't reveal this information unless you were supremely confident that you wouldn't be caught. Although I'm not certain that this woman is really who she claims to be yet. What she is doing does fit with my previous theories about her. She leaves visible trails and clues on purpose. She must believe herself to be untouchable, even by people who are extensively trained. Now that is a bit worrying, considering that I'm facing her by myself. Also correct. But I don't think I'll tell you why I'm untouchable, but you... You enjoy a bit of a detective work, don't you, Captain? Well, my job does often require me to employ using detective skills. That's already something else that I have an idea of. You have training, I can tell by the way you move. Even now, she's cat like Grace. She's carefully poised, just standing in the right position. Judging by the length of her whip, I would guess she has about 3 meter reach. And she just happened to be roughly that close to me right now. You would be correct once again. Before you asked why I picked your crew, why do you think is the answer? Ah! Well, she 
did say that we have a higher success rate than anyone else, so that one seems likely. This one seems unlikely given how much she plans everything else out, so yeah. If I were to think about it logically, you would view us as a potential threat. You mentioned that we have the highest success rate on the missions among the company's mercenaries. Nailed it! So if we're going to so if I were going to protect myself, I would eliminate my most dangerous opponent first. How far am I off the mark? You would be right. However, that is not the only reason. Despite everything, I'm a very big fan of yours. Wouldn't it be fun to get involved with one of your adventures? I thought to myself. Did you set up this bounty deliberately just to lure me out? Oh no, it wasn't me. I'm just taking advantage of the situation. Her whip begins to crackle with power. So, can the great Captain Shika and her crew capture Akani, the Enigma? I can't help but let out a smirk form on my face. Akani, the Enigma. Quite the grandiose title you've given yourself. From what I've seen, your adventure are the definition of grandiose. So I wouldn't want to disappoint. I can't wait to see what sort of fun we'll have together. She already sounds like she's sure of her victory. However, there is just one detail that you overlooked, and that ultimately will be your downfall, like uh, Akane. Oh, whatever might that be, Captain? You just saved me the trouble of finding me yourself. Are you sure that you're ready to play a game of cat and mouse with my crew? Because I don't think you are. You have training and experience, but you're way too early to be able to beat someone of the best in the business. Hmm. If you know me, then you know what you're getting, that you, you're going to be in for quite of the fight. Akane just giggles. Oh, I most certainly am ready. After all, you still have a lot of missing pieces to the puzzle. All you know is at the moment is my alias. I'm just a drifter who came onto the ship recently. No one else here knows my face or my name. She begins to slip back into the shadows. I will see you soon, Shika. I cannot wait to see what sort of fun we will have together. It is then that I see many security drones drifting in from, in from the hallways. All of them look like newer models, faster reflexes, better networking, more precision. Not the kind of thing you, you just find lying around. Oh, you were even kind enough to leave me with some target practice. I have to take a moment to analyze them before I strike. As far as I can see, they are equipped with non-lethal weapons. She said she was a fan, so I'm just going to presume that she isn't out to kill us. But if I actually got hit by the drones, it would be rather humiliating. Reputation is everything in this line of work, after all. Oh, so that is actually us. I thought it was the AI. Oh! That makes a whole lot more sense. Still though, I kind of like the idea that the AI was just... doting around, always present. Oh, so the AI doesn't have a face or a body. I'm slightly saddened by that, actually. I retreat and pull out my pistol. That looks ancient, but sure. A barrage of paralyzing rounds begin to rain down from above. I dive behind cover. They're only robots, so I don't have to adjust my pistol's destructive power. Squeezing the trigger, I feel a powerful blast erupt from its barrel. An explosion takes out a portion of the drones, but more and more arrive from seemingly out of nowhere. Ah, they're the compact model, though they shouldn't be hard to deal with. But overwhelming numbers may be a problem. I duck from cover to cover, firing at drones whenever I get a clear shot. I'm not taking them down, however. Pistol configuration, fully automatic. Instead of concentrating all of the energy in into pistol shots, I fire a spray of deadly pellets at the enemy. They pierce through the drone's light plating, destroying large quantities of them every time I come back out from behind cover. It's then that the drones begin to change their tactics. <coughs> they begin firing shots which have an arc, attempting to shoot me while I'm still behind cover. I'm forced to roll out into the open to avoid being stunned. Pistol configuration EMP. Most of the drones these days are shielded from EMP type attacks. A pistol doesn't have enough punch to be able to destroy them, but this should be enough to stun them while I find new cover. For a moment, the drones scatter in the air erratically. 
Several of them crash into each other, causing them to fall onto the middle floor in a crumbled heap. But that still leaves a sizable number of them. Unleashing another barrage of automatic fire is soon down to just a few of them. The AI, which run these network drones, seems to be in disarray. The drones are retreating from the hall, regrouping at the end of it. This time they approach slowly. It's a systematic approach, slowly eliminating potential places where I can take cover. But it isn't going to help, now that there's only a few of them left. I do not have to worry about cover as much. As soon as I step out, all of them lock their targets, targets, targeters onto me. Fortunately, para paralysis round moves a bit slower than conventional bullets. I'm able to stand out in the open, dodging the projectile with ease. I fire back, and it's over. Among the twisted metal husks of drone, I cannot help but let a grin spread on my face. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed myself like this. Not only at this is this jump going to pay really well, it's also going to be a lot of fun. But I need to think about this more carefully. If she's using non-lethal weapons, what does that mean? Hmm. I don't think this is true. I don't think she wants a hostage. She said she wants to be part of our cruise adventure by being as close to it as possible, which means being a part of it. So she is testing the crew to see how far she can push it, is my idea. She said she wanted to have lots of fun, so naturally she wouldn't want it to end quickly by using lethal weapons. This is some sort of elaborate game to her. Well, that would make sense. Piecing it together, it will also explain a lot about her actions. Oh, <laughs> that's a bit of a... Captain, are you here? Where did you go? The two must have been wondering where I went. I'm fine, don't, do not worry about me. What happened here? She looks around at all the smoldering drone scraps on the floor. I have a run in with our target. A target? You mean she's here? Let's get back to our quarters. I'll explain everything when we get back. And that's a perfect place to end this episode. So until next time, hopefully we can get a better lead on who this Akane really is. And hopefully we can establish a plan to be able to bring her in and actually collect our bounty. But it won't be easy, that's for sure. So, until next time, take care.